It wouldn't be too much if I said I mostly watched The Gilded Age to see the incredible costumes. But I am also a history major, which makes me a sucker for any kind of period drama. After asking you what you want me to cover in a video about the history of the Gilded Age, most of you answered the fashion of the era, so I have no choice but to oblige. Every character's outfit on the show tells a lot about their social stance as well as their character traits. The colors they wear, the types of fabrics they use, and the styles they have indicate what kind of a person they are and where they stand in the 1880s of American society. I find analyzing this quite exciting. So let's take a look at some of my favorite wardrobes from the show and talk about their significance. Let's go. The Old Money As you know, the show depends on the main dichotomy between the old and the new money people. The costume choices make the social divide between each part of society more dramatic. The leading characters that represent old money are the Van Rynes. They are usually seen in more modest outfits. The dresses they wear are elegant but understated. Simple looking but also full of intricate details. The fabrics of the dresses are of utmost quality, but they are still subtle. Van Rynes money and social standing are shown through the quality of the fabrics they use and the number of different gowns they have. But it's never meant to show off like Bertha does with her outfits, which we'll analyze in a minute. Agnes, for example, has weight and texture in her outfits. She's usually in jewel tones, which is done intentionally to symbolize her prideful nature. Ada, on the other hand, although similar in style to her sister, is seen wearing more earth tones. She especially wears lots of oranges, and her dresses are brighter and lighter than Agnes's, showcasing the contrast of their characters. While Agnes is more pessimistic and brutal and her outfits have darker tones like purples and dark blues, Ada is warmer and cheery, and that's evident in her lighter dresses. As for Marion, we see a change in her style as she comes to New York as an insecure young woman and becomes more confident in her skin. At first, she wears more pastel tones and lots of yellows and those make her look young and inexperienced. That's exactly what her character was going through as she first came to New York. Her bright blue and yellow outfits with floral patterns are remnants of her upbringing in the countryside and her delicacy compared to the people around her. But her later dresses, as she finds her confidence, have darker colors and fit her better, and also differentiate her from her aunt's style, as she wears clothes that could be considered new fashion. The New Money In contrast to the old money families, the new ones are there to show off their wealth, and Bertha, as the leading character with lots of new money, does this with her extravagant and colorful clothes. She wears lots of light greens and silver, symbolic of her money and wealth. Her outfits are full of shiny fabrics, strange decorations, and modern cuts, and they show how out of place she is in New York society. Bertha always tries to outdo everyone with her fashion choices. She buys every first thing that comes out and is not scared to wear them, but also because she needs to impress the members of the society she just enters into. The old money people do not have anything to prove. Their place in society is already established. But Bertha needs to buy and impress her way into the upper echelons of society, and her clothes are great tools for her. However, Bertha still wants to belong in the society. She wants to be a big part of it. She wants to be accepted. That's why as she meets Mr. McAllister and gets advice from him about getting acceptance, her style also evolves. While her style is a lot extravagant at the beginning, her gowns become a little bit simpler, although still detailed. In season 1, she has two major red gowns that she wears, but in season 2, she doesn't wear any red or similar flashy colors, because she is more and more part of society now. While still having a distinct style, she doesn't need to attract special attention anymore. A transformation also takes place for Gladys, who always wears her hair down in the first season, as a sign of her youth and innocence. It's part of her image as she is not out in society yet. But once she goes out, her hair is always up like the other women in the show. In a similar vein, her earlier clothes are full of light colors and floral designs. But in season 2, she has more striking outfits as she is more confident and open. Overall review I know I said this would be a history video, but I got caught up in all the beautiful garments. Let me say this though. The styles of the old money people get their inspiration from the early 1880s. But the dresses that Bertha wears are more like the 1890s to show her futuristic sense of self and fashion. Some people criticize the show for not being historically accurate, but I think these details further emphasize the contrast between characters like Bertha and Agnes. 
While one of them is full of new ideas, new money, and new clothes, the other is comfortable where she is and doesn't need anything new. Showing their differences not only through script writing, but also through their costumes is a brilliant idea if you ask me, even if it means some historical liberties have been taken. If you want to see how much The Gilded Age is historically accurate, you can watch the video I made on the subject. Other than that, tell me, which character's style shows off their personality more? Write down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to next season for more videos like this. See you soon.